the end of the world has come to pass. But you have a vision of a brave new world, a new order that you will create with like-minded survivors. Together, you will shape the landscape into your dream utopia. Fight off intruders and call yourselves the Zombie A Social Club. Ooh, does have a kind of a ring to it. In Zombie, a social club, you're going to be setting up a social club. This is a card game where you're going to first draft some cards between all the players and then you're going to start recruiting characters, survivors of this apocalypse and try to continue to survive and imprint yourself on the rest of the world by taking on zombies and defending yourself against zombies as well as the attacks from the other social clubs which are popping up. Now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to play the game and you need to remember that while I'm showing you this, this is a prototype version of the game so the art may change, the components may change, the rules may change and there may be lots of other stuff added on with stretch goals. So bear that in mind, um, there's a link up on the screen now that you can click on which will take you straight to the Kickstarter. There's a link in the show notes below that will take you to the Kickstarter and there will be a link at the end of this video to take you to the Kickstarter if you want to find out more about this game and also hear other reviews or first impressions of what people think about this game. So let's jump to the table. So once all the players have comfortably installed themselves into comfy chairs around the table, they can collect a reference card which will explain the actions that they can perform on their turn and also what the icons mean on the cards. An important thing to note is the cards have a double function. The back of the cards are used to keep score of the game, either for yourself or for the zombies. Any cards face down in front of you is a victory point. If you get seven of these, you win the game instantly. Any face down cards in the center of the table will make up the zombie horde. During the course of the game, players are gonna be adding cards to the horde, either from their characters dying, or maybe even just discarding cards from their hand to keep their hand size down. This horde will grow and grow and also diminish as you can attack these zombies and take their cards as victory points. But the zombies also get victory points. You're gonna to need to create a separate pile of these cards to record the victory points. In a two player game, if they get eight points, they win. In a three player game, it'd be 12 points. And in a four player game, 16 points, so beware. So that's the back of the cards, but what about the front of the cards? A large amount of the cards in the deck will contain survivors who have survived this apocalypse so far. Uh, they come in four different factions. You have the punks, you have the hippies, survivalists, and the capitalists. There are also some neutral survivors who don't belong to any of the factions. These characters have varied powers that you can use if they are in your base camp. Some can search, drawing cards from the deck. Some can fight, meaning you can attack the zombie horde or attack another player and some can manipulate other survivors to join your base camp. There are also a rare few survivors that also contain a victory point themselves. Having one of those in your camp will give you that point, but beware they can die or be manipulated into somebody else's camp. 
Also included in the deck are some zombie cards, which you can hold in your hand for as long as you want, or you can add them on your turn into the zombie horde. And there are also some take that cards, which you can play at any time during the game to cause chaos and panic in between all the other players. The bravest player at the table will take the extremely large deck of playing cards, give them a shuffle, and then deal out seven cards to each player before placing the deck face down into the middle of the table. This is downtown. The next step in the setup is to create downtown. Now there's gonna be some survivors in downtown that players can recruit during the course of the game. To do this, you'll take the top card from the deck and reveal it if it is a survivor leave them in the middle of the table face up. Now what happens if you don't find a survivor? If you find a zombie or, or a take that card, it goes face down into the zombie horde. Downtown will always have the same number of survivors as there are players in the game. In this example, there'll be three. You'll draw from the top of the deck. Any cards which are not survivor become zombies in the horde and any cards that are survivors, you add to the side. This will be the case throughout the game. Anytime someone recruits a survivor from downtown, you automatically have to start drawing from the deck to replace them. This, of course, adds more zombies. Before play can start, there'll be a drafting phase. So the seven cards that you would doubt at the beginning may not be the seven cards that you're going to start the game with. You'll look at the seven cards, you'll choose one, place it in front of yourself, and then pass the remaining cards to the player on your left while collecting the six remaining cards from the player on your right and then doing the same again, keeping one of those, placing it in front of yourself and then passing to the left. You do this until you have a new set of seven cards and now you are ready to play. So starting with the start player, possibly that player that was bold enough to pick up the deck of cards, they will perform the following steps in order. First, they refresh any of their characters that are exhausted. Then they have the chance to pass. In doing so, you get to draw three cards from the deck. If you don't pass, you can perform actions. There are an unlimited amount of free actions, which will be basically moving cards from your hand to the camp, to the downtown, to the camp, to your hand, yada, yada, yada. And also there are three different character actions that they can perform as well. When that player has decided that they're not gonna do it any more actions, it turns to the zombies and they attack before going to the player on the left of the start player and then they perform those steps. So the first thing a player does on their turn is refresh any exhausted characters. Characters become exhausted after you perform their character actions. To refresh a character, you simply stand them up from their laying down position. They are now ready to be used to either defend your camp or perform their character action. Now it's this stage of the game where players can continue to play or they can pass. If they pass, they get to draw three cards into their hand and then it comes to the end phase where the zombies attack. Now the zombies are going to attack at the end of every player's phase. And you're going to have to be careful because if you are the player that has the most cards in your hand and in your base camp, you're going to be the target of the zombies. If instead of passing you've decided to play, you do free actions and character actions. Let me start by explaining what a free action is. One of the free actions you can do and one of the most important free actions that you can do is take one of the characters from your hand and place it into your camp. You can do this as many times as you wish, but every time you add a character to your camp, they must be from the same faction. You cannot mix factions, but you can add a neutral character to your camp as well. Another free action you can do is take one of your standing characters from your camp and move them into downtown. But why would you want to do this? Well, you may wish to change factions. By getting rid of characters with a certain faction to downtown, you can then recruit other factions into your base camp. You can also send characters from your hand straight into downtown to 
build up the pool. This will decrease the number of cards that you have in your hand and making you a less likely target for the zombies. Another way to decrease the number of cards in your hand is if you have any zombies in your hand, you can add them to downtown. Unfortunately, they will go into the horde, giving them an extra plus one on their attack. Or you might place one there so you can fight the zombie horde and get a victory point. Another thing you can do is if you have four characters in your base camp, you can trade them in for a victory point. Now these characters can be exhausted or standing or a mix of both, but they all need to be from the same faction or with neutrals mixed in the mix. You'll take three of these four cards and place them in the graveyard. The graveyard is a deck of cards which is face up a discard pile in downtown. The fourth card you turn upside down and keep it as a victory point. Now let's talk about the character's actions. There are three types. There's search, attack, and manipulation. And they all come in two different levels. All the characters have a mixture of these actions, and you can only use these actions if you have the character in your base, in a standing position, ready to go. Again, you can't do the same action several times. So if you have three characters with search, only one of them is allowed to search choose which one and exhaust them before doing another action and that action would be a different action the attack or the manipulation so let's go into detail about these actions we'll start with the search action if you have a level one search that means that you draw one card from the deck if you have a level two search you can draw two cards from the deck if you use a character with the basic manipulation, this will allow you to recruit one of the survivors from downtown into your base camp, or give it to another player at the table, or just kill them off and place them into the graveyard. If you add them to your base or another player's base, they have to meet the requirements of the faction. You cannot mix factions unless they are a neutral character. If you play a character with the advanced manipulation, you can recruit as normal, or you can go and steal a character from another player's base and add it to your own. You can also do an attack, and there's a level one attack and a level two attack. And you can also choose who you wish to attack. You can attack the zombie horde, or you can attack one of your opponents. If you attack the zombie horde with a level one attack, you'll kill one of the zombies and you'll take that card as a victory point. If you use a level two attack, you kill two zombies. One of those will be a victory point, but the other one will be placed in the graveyard. Now, if you decide to attack another player, you're gonna open up another can of worms. You need to remember that when you do an attack, it's either a strength of one or two, and your strength will need to be higher than that player's defense and the player's defense is decided by their characters and if they're standing. If they're standing up, they will provide one point of defense for you to defeat. If none are standing up, they have no defense. So let's say you attack this player here. They have no defense because they have no characters standing. So whether you use one point or two points of strength against them on your attack, you're going to win a point victory. That player will choose one of their cards from their hand and give it to you as a victory point. Now, if you attack this player here, they have one in defense, which means your attack is gonna have to be higher than a one. Now, let's say that you just attack this player with an attack force of one. What would happen is you wouldn't get a victory point, but you would kill that standing character. That character's body is added to the growing horde of zombies. But if you'd attacked with a strength of two, you would not only just kill that character, but you would also get the victory point. If during the course of the game, you are attacked and you are forced to give over the last card from your hand to your attacker, whether it be human or zombie, you become neutralized. Now, what does neutralized mean? Well, it means bad news, more bad news and good news. The bad news is you will have to discard all the characters that you have in your camp to the graveyard. The other bad news is that you will have to give one of your preciously earned victory points to whoever defeated you, whether it be a player or the zombie horde. But the good news is that you can no longer be attacked by anyone. That is until your next turn. 
When your next turn comes around, you draw up to four cards in your hand and then you play as normal. Now, one thing you're not allowed to do is suicide. No, 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 no. You cannot do suicide in this game. What does that mean? It means that you cannot play cards until you have no cards in your hand becoming neutralized. Doesn't work. This is the apocalypse, goddammit. Once the active player has decided that they're no longer going to perform any more actions or they've already passed, that's when it goes on to the interesting part of their turn. The zombie attack. Yes, the zombie horde will attack the most attractive player at the table. And you may wish to be ugly then. So what will happen is the attractive player will be decided by the player that has the most cards in their camp and in their hand. An attack works like normal. Each zombie in the horde will give one point of attack. So there may be five or there may be ten zombies or any number of zombies. And again, your defense value will be any standing characters in your camp, which will probably surrender and, and join up in their team. And of course, if you've been slaughtered by the zombies, don't forget to hand over one of your preciously earned victory points. Now, you may be thinking to yourself that at the beginning of the game, this sounds a bit unfair because our first player is going to play some cards and then there's going to be a zombie attack and the other players ain't got no chance to defend. Well, technically, the players that haven't played have not arrived in town. So therefore, they are not a target for the zombies, but they can still be attractive. They'll have seven cards. But if you're the first or the second player and you've played some cards, just make sure at the end of your turn that you have less than seven cards. Because yes, these guys may be the attractive ones that the zombies are going after, but because they're not in town, they can't be attacked and you won't be attacked either. After the zombies have attacked, play passes to the player on the left and then they take their turn performing those steps. One thing I haven't spoken to you about yet is the event cards. The event cards here can be played at any time, whether it be your turn or your opponent's turn. And these will either cause carnage for your opponents or help you out immensely. Once these cards are played, you add them to the graveyard and then you draw another card. And there you go, that is how you play the game. The game will end when either a player has arrived at seven points or if the zombies have arrived at their score. So there you have it. That's just one way to play Zombie A Social Club. Yes, I said one way. There is actually another set of rules for casual players. And then there's also some hardcore variants to make this game more um, hardcore, I think's the word. Yes, you can go and check out the developments in the game and ask any questions about the game on the Kickstarter page. Link is in the end credits of this video. And you can also go and check out what the stretch goals are and what people think about this game in some reviews. So all I'll say now is hope you found this video informative. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've liked it, please give it a like. If you know someone that might appreciate this game, share this video with them. And uh, if you want to check out everything else that I've been up to, you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com and check out everything that I've been up to. Yeah, so I'll say ciao for now and remember to please play nicely with each other's brains. Uh, games. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good I got some more games?